need to. And what else? The right thing to do. Okay, say. So let's get started on our lesson. All right, well, last night or yesterday, we moved back into our house. It was uh, about two months and three days or so, but we finally moved back to our house. So we're all excited. It's been a pain in the butt. Yes, I'm, it was the first time in two and a half months I slept in my bed, so or two and two months and a couple of days. But it was nice. All right, we will get started. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. And COVID free. I got my uh my test back yesterday for my whole whole family and we all are COVID free. So it was a good day yesterday. Thank you for asking. All, all right, let me get started. And unfortunately, I just have the hiccups, so I'll be having hiccups for a little bit and then hopefully they'll go away. So let's start sharing the screen. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about concepts and this follows, this starts your kind of the bit of kind of going through your restaurant project right here. Uh, and this is kind of <clears throat> talking about concepts and all that good stuff. So here we go, share. This. Oh, you need to be all lucky, Make this bigger. Hold on. All right. Make that small. Hold on. I'm just getting the chat set up so I can see the chat. Uh -huh. Writing a letter to a person and then. That All right. Okay, so concepts. Everybody there? Uh, ready to go? And am I streaming okay? Okay, thank you. Since I've moved multiple places, I want to make sure that my streaming's working good. All right. Let's see. Slideshow. Anybody got any news? Everybody doing okay? Nothing uh, y'all want to talk about? Or is there anything y'all want to talk about? We good? All right, let's, let's go for it. All right, your concept. Part of the restaurant uh, is the menu. Uh, yeah, that is right. Um, the, the menu is the heart of your restaurant, right? You know, people are not going to come to your restaurant without ordering your food, you know, so they're going to see the menu. Um, so the menu has to look nice, has to draw your attention. It's got to be spelled right for sure, right? You don't want any misspellings or punctuations or any of that sort of stuff wrong with it. Um, so, but it is the heart of the restaurant. So if you have a crappy restaurant or a crappy menu, you're, you're, maybe your restaurant's not gonna do as well. Um, you know, I think that, you know, everybody's trying to figure out how to deal with the, you know, the paper menus right now, uh, making paper menus look good uh, because everybody's not using real, real menus right now. And that's kind of a big change. 
everybody's just doing Xerox copies or copies of their menus. Um, and, and that's a little different uh, compared to uh, years and, you know, I mean, everybody's been using regular menus and now it's changing. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, and what I want you to look at is that menu down at the bottom of, of the PowerPoint. What do you what do you think about that menu? You know, what, what do you do you think it's too busy? Do you think you like it? Uh, what what do people think about that menu down below? You can unmute yourself and tell me. Anybody? My dad would say it's too small. <laughs> too small? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a that's, that's the only thing. The writing's maybe a little small. It is kind of far away, but it is a little small. But I like the I like the design. I like the the kind of a create your own pizza, maybe it looks like, or something like that down there. But um yeah, I mean, I, for the most part, I like it, but it's a little small. Um, you just make sure whatever you have on the menu, you know, it it, it is very, it, you describe it really well. You need descriptive words when, when you're actually uh, doing all of this stuff. You, you need to have good, uh, you know, like instead of saying, um, I don't know, hot uh, sandwich, say, just right out of the oven. And that sounds even more of a attractive, uh, just right out of the oven or oven baked or uh, oven roasted or something. So where you're just kind of uh, giving a little more explanation and a little more sexiness to it. You, you, need, you need to give that sexiness to uh to the uh, to the food, because no one wants to say oh, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are not sexy, but you can say palms puree, hot and fresh palms puree. Doesn't that sound better than mashed taters, right? You know, or mashed potatoes, palms puree. Just give it a French word. You can charge about uh, twenty-five to you know fifty more cents uh, for mashed potatoes. Uh, if you just call them palms puree, you know, so making sure they sound good, making, making sure it's attractive to the eye, to the, uh, you know, menus should be attractive, should be sexy, right? You know, I mean, it should complement your food, right? If your food's sexy, you've got to have a, got to have a sexy looking menu. If not, you know, may, maybe people don't want it want your food. So, you know, again, just be, be very careful. Um, okay, so let's see, since restaurants, I don't need to do business. All right, uh, pricing. We're gonna be talking about pricing as well. Uh, hold on, the chat line. Eye catchy, yes. Uh, you want something where you know catches the eye for sure. Um, come on, there we go. Um, sorry, I press it too many times and it goes on its own. Um, okay, so. Restaurants typically fail between the first year. So you, you need to um, you know, do whatever you can to bring people in your restaurant. The more asses in the chairs means the more money you're going to be making, plain and simple. So. Uh, you need people in your dining room. Now, now what has changed? Uh, we, we, we're not sitting in the dining room that much. 
25% capacity at, in, in restaurants. So, um, you know, think, think about that. We, we are now having to rewrite the, of what, what, what are we going to do to be successful be successful uh, in a restaurant and someone just went outside seating for sure. Uh, figuring out a way to be able to provide a good food, but not, not being packed in so, like sardines. I mean, has anybody ever been to Cheesecake Factory or, or, you know, any of the, um, Binnegan's or Friday's or uh, baby back ribs. What's that? Uh, is, I want my baby back. What? What is that one? Where they say? Oh, is it? What is it? Chili's. Chili's. Yeah. All right. So Chili's. You know. I mean, they pack those people in. You know, there's so many people in there, and now they're having to figure out ways to pack in people without packing them in so tight where it, it's, you've got six feet between everybody else. So it, it is a, a big thing outside seating and now just making sure that you have good drive-through service or somewhere where you can drive through. Uh, a lot of places now are just kind of creating a, their own drive through I, I've seen a few restaurants now starting to cut out sides of their walls so they can expand into a drive through setting. Or I know that the, they opened up a Chipotle on uh, Brody, uh, Sal, uh, I guess, no, sl I'm sorry, Slaughter and uh, in Mopac area uh, where I live. And they have now a drive through, but it's only for online orders only. So if you, if you do your online order, you can just drive up and then they'll hand it to you, but it's only a drive through order, um, drive in. So you, you, you're not going to be just going up and placing an order. So th there's going to be a lot of differences and a lot of different things that people are going to try because of you're just not going into the restaurant anymore uh, for right now. I, it, hopefully, in I I hope it'll change because I I love people coming into the restaurant. Excuse me, um, but with the atmosphere it is today, people are not going into the restaurants uh, and. I think there's a lot of uncertainty because some people are saying, go to the restaurants, go to the restaurants. And then some people are saying, oh, you shouldn't go to the restaurants because, you know, wh whatever. So there's conflicting stories. So people are not knowing what to do. So, um, you know, I think making sure that you have a good plan uh, when you are dealing with when you're dealing with this, uh, you know, building a restaurant or um, trying to create a menu. Uh, one of the best ways to reduce the risk of an owner in failed restaurant is to have some restaurant experience before you start. Yeah, that, that's, that's a, of course, if you're going to be a manager, you're going to start in the, or if you want to be a, a boss or whatever, uh, but working in the industry is going to be basically the, the only way you're going to figure it out and be successful. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I started from the ground up. Um, when I was like 14 or 13 or 14, uh, I started loading wood uh, for a barbecue place. And then, 
you know, became their dishwasher and then became the manager or whatever else, and then kind of moved on from there. Uh, but, you know, I, just getting into the restaurant industry, it's, it's a different breed on its own. Uh, you just got to be, you got to kind of know a lot of stuff. And we've already kind of hit some of this stuff about payroll and, um, you know, development of the menu and uh, marketing of the restaurant and how you market and how you, who you market to uh and who's your target market uh are your is your target market gonna be i don't know 20 somethings or 30 somethings or 40 something for me my target market is everybody because i everybody's money spends everybody's money is uh is good so i'm gonna target everybody in the you know that i can because i don't want to what I call pigeonhole myself into just a certain target market. I, I want to hit everybody. I, I want everybody's money because everybody's money spends. So trying to figure that out is good to go. Who is your target market? And looky here, good segue. All right, um, target market is a uh, who you are marketing to for example let's say you have uh, um, you want to uh, focus it on college kids let's say you're downtown by ut area uh, and before covid right uh you know covid kind of throws a wrench in everything but uh but before COVID, you know, I would market uh, cheap food uh, more. I would I would market quantity first quality. I would I would if I was targeting college students or whatever else. I would do uh, all you can eat buffets. I would do something very cheap but plentiful like. Uh, you know, a, a Chinese food buffet, you know, yeah, that's a plentiful uh, thing, but something cheap, something fast, something just I can turn and burn uh, really easily. But, you know, who is your target market? Is it going to be senior citizens? Um, you know, if you're, there's a retirement community called uh, Sun City, I think it's close to Georgetown. Well, if I'm going to be opening up and it's a retirement kind of community, um, you know, so everybody around there is usually seniors or, you know, 50 plus or 60 plus. Uh, so that means my food is going to be targeted to that kind of that group, if you will. Uh, but again, Sometimes you don't want to pigeonhole it because I don't, I don't want only just seniors. I want, I want everybody. But again, you're trying to go for your target market. Um, you know, what is it? Boca Raton. I think that's a, a big retirement uh, community. You know, so I would say, you know, go for low sodium, low calorie, uh, focus in on more of the health benefits of the food uh, to avoid any, you know, instead of having a bunch of fried greasy things on the menu, um, they're probably looking for more of a health conscious, maybe lower sodium, lower, you know, lower fat uh, because they're seniors. Um, are uh, if you're looking when, when, and this is a while back but you know when my kids were little uh you know i i i would only go to kid friendly places uh when my kids were little because i i wanted i didn't because god knows they're gonna cry for some reason i don't know why but they'll cry out of the restaurant or whatever else or get upset and you know make noise and I don't want to be anywhere where someone, you know, is going to be annoyed by my kid. Uh, so I go to kid-friendly places, uh, you know, places that have like 
playscapes or that have some kid friendly uh, toys or things, coloring books or something to keep my kids content while I'm eating. So, you know, maybe go for, you know, like there's a place called Waterloo Ice House that has, um, they have like a, um, a jungle gym or a playscape outside, you know, so the parents can have drinks and the kids could go play and kind of hang out or whatever else. But finding your niche, your thing that people, that will draw people into your restaurant. Does that make sense? That's what a concept or kind of a target market you're trying to create and try to figure out who is your clientele going to be. And again, it is kind of um, looking at the neighborhood, looking at your um, how much people make around that neighborhood. What ethnicity, uh, you know, eth ethnic, uh, ethnic background, you know, maybe it's a big Jewish community right around there. And I would, it would be stupid for me to create a, a pig or any sort of pork restaurant or anything that has pork, because I know the Jewish community is not going to be eating, they don't eat pork, right? So they think it's dirty, so they're not going to eat it. So why would I even create a, uh, a pork restaurant, even in a near somewhere where there's a big Jewish community, right? So that, that's not a smart thing to do. So looking at who your market is and who, who what you're trying to sell, uh, because you can't sometimes sell things to people that, you know, think it's not good, right? They, they, you know, the Jewish community thinks pork is di dirty, so they're not going to consume it. So then why have a restaurant in that area? So understanding your, your, who your target market is, is very important. Um, for example, like making sure that you, you know, know, just know what, you don't want to price your customers out. So if you're, target market has a specific kind of price range uh, that they don't want a, a, a threshold of, of a ticket price on per person. You know, they maybe they don't want any, no more than $10 for a meal. Well, then you've got to scale it back and try to make sure that you have uh, on your menu, no more than $10 per meal or something like that, or ticket price. All right, I think I've talked that to death. Uh, let's see, a uh, family style restaurant, which contain, uh, for parents, we already discussed that, but uh, you know, so the parents can eat or uh, anybody can eat that has kids, not just the parents, it could be, you know, other people, but other people's kids, but it's nice to have something that will kind of occupy the kids' time a little bit. Um, on the other hand, uh, upscale quiet restaurants often uh, offering about a two-hour dining experience. You know, uh, you know, just for family or friends or teenagers or whatever else. Uh, but you can see right here, totally different uh, in these pictures totally different uh, situation, right? You have a loud, chaotic uh, kid party, and then you have a fine dining, quiet, uh, little, you know, uh, experience. So two different styles of, of way of doing it, you know, fine dining and kid friendly. <coughs> um. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Uh, service style. Selecting service style. Uh, you have, what are some service styles? You have like one was, uh, could be 
uh, bringing it to the like quick fast food is a service style. You have uh, buffet is a service style. Uh, another, I I can't remember what they're looking for, but there's a, a thing called the Russian style uh, service. You have a Russian style service, English style service, uh, buffet, all of that. But um, what type of service you're looking for. Um, if you're a morning person, you may more uh, like to own a uh, specialty like a breakfast or a brunch. And like I said, find something that you that you really like to do and turn that into your career. And if it's your, you know, you like pastries, you know, be, work in the pastry department. Or if you're, uh, you know, you're a morning person, you're always up early, well, hell, be be the restaurant manager or work, work in the morning and work doing breakfast or whatever else. But um, just, just find what you, what works good for you. Um, on the other hand, or let's see, you also like morning and then you have the, the night owls. Uh, you can always work at, you know, uh, in the night, you know, starting at four until late or, you know, sometimes three o'clock um, until late, until late. Kind of depends on on your crew, but you have a uh, excuse me. You have a um, a good array of times that you can work. You can work in the morning. You can work at night. You can work midday. I mean, there's uh, you can work overnight, twenty four hours. Like uh, do the graveyard shift uh, I've done the graveyard shift at a uh, at a hotel before uh, managing the restaurant at night uh, in serving because some of these restaurant our hotels have 24-hour uh, room service and you know you have to be able to to uh, produce that and to to get that but that's a late night usually a solo person someone just by themselves working on that. Um, hold on one second. I'm gonna mute myself to blow my nose. <coughs> Thank you, sorry. All right, um, so Okay, you've got a typical uh, food service style. You have fast food, which offers uh, food types, a range of burgers, fries, hot dogs, sandwiches, um, you name it, something like that. And then you got mid price. Uh, you have uh, kind of a value meal or, um, you know, kind of a, a full course at a, a value price. You know, it's got like a, a starch, a vegetable, uh, a protein, a, a sauce, uh, and it's a certain amount of price. Um, you know, that's kind of a mid scale. And then upscale would be offering full service meals with high class atmosphere. Um, in turn, in turn, that's going to be a high pr higher price, right? The the more service you get. The more service you get, the more higher price that restaurant's going to be, right? Uh, if you has anybody ever been to a really nice restaurant where you feel like uh, the wait staff, uh, they, your water glass never gets empty. They're always attentive. <clears throat> they're when you get up to go to the restroom, they uh, put a new new napkin down or they fold you know nowadays i think that's going to change a lot of times they used to fold the napkins up or whatever else when you would get out i think now they're going to probably give you just a new napkin instead of touching your old or your used napkin i never like that uh that part of it because i i don't like touching people's napkins um but you know just that high class service uh, <clears throat> is something that, you know, people, some people 
come to expect, uh, depending on you know who your clientele is. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I some choices on how to narrow your food. Uh, the food choices is. Uh, is the cuisine, you know, what is your cuisine? Um, you know, and now there's so many damn fusion restaurants. You have Filipino and Korean, you have, you know, I mean, all sorts of different, different kind of uh, fusion restaurants out there. So yeah, those things are, are kind of popping up, uh, just kind of different fusions of different cuisines. I think that's kind of a cool thing. Um, but just kind of narrowing it down what you want. Uh, what, what do you want to sell? Um, does your service style make sense to your concept? Now, for example, if it's a, if your concept is a, I don't know, uh, um, a kid friendly concept and you don't have anything uh, in your service style, maybe not, or let's say, let's say if it's more of an old school French style, uh, like table service, uh, table service style, like Russian style uh, food service. Uh, now that would be, you know, very high class, very fine dining restaurant. And then, then it's, you know, it just doesn't go with your concept. If you're more of a kid friendly and you're doing a very upscale, like serve, like, service in the front of the house that just doesn't really flow very well uh, so just making sure that your concept flows with whatever style uh, okay here we go you have a uh, traditional uh, traditional restaurant sit back uh, you know, basically just the traditional restaurant you have the breakfast restaurant slash cafe catering uh bakery cafe coffee shop slash bakery specialty shops uh <clears throat> these are some sort of different types of more pastries or or you could also a traditional you know restaurant i mean there, there's many different specialty restaurants uh or restaurant or businesses out there And also speed. People like, you know, I mean, these three right here, and even uh, if you want to put a Chick fil A uh, on this as well, but those all for me are fast food. So they need to be fast. You know, you don't want to have something slow. And the water burger by my house is like slow as molasses, it's the slowest. Uh, water burger you will ever go to, um, but the McDonald's by my house is fast. So they're they're you know so do you just got to know, um, you know if it's a fast food place it needs to be fast. It needs to you need to turn and burn those those uh, you know those restaurants or turn and burn the in the you know in the drive through or in the whatever else you've just got to push it through really fast <clears throat> we call it a fast food you got okay so th this is fast food fast service kind of a deal so mcdonald's wendy's burger king um any of those <clears throat> then you got fast casual Panera Bread, Noodle Company, Boston, uh, Boston Market. Uh, those are also, those are like fast casual. They're a little kind of one notch above fast food, uh, but not, not fine dining or not just regular uh, 
restaurant. So this is a fast casual. Um, you order at the counter and you wait and you, uh, you know, get your food and then you just sit down and you eat the food there. <coughs> so that's fast casual. So fast food, fast casual. Um, and then just casual dining in general would be Olive Garden Red Lobster. Kind of a, a that's casual dining. It's, it's not like fine dining. It's, but you sit down at a table. You typically get your order taken. And you don't have to go, you know, uh, go get your own drink. They'll bring you your own drink. All of that. It's more of a sitting at a table, uh, just kind of working on. Um, you know, that, that sort of stuff. So no, you know, and, and there's a, probably a dress code of some sort, you know, no shoes, no shirt, no shirt, no shoes, no service, uh, kind of a deal that you have to go in at least with a shirt on or shoes to, to make yourself look presentable. Um, at these places, but at fast food, they typically don't really care, or even, uh, but for casual dining, for sure. Um, and then you've got fine dining. Um, at our graduation, we had on s Saturday, we had our first uh, virtual graduation, it was nice. Uh, I always love it, love graduation, because I get to see everybody and hear all the good stories and all of that. But uh, we had our graduation speaker was the chef from uh, the French Laundry. So, uh, and it was, uh, it was great. He, he was, I actually asked for that, <clears throat> for them to give me a copy of just the speech itself. And I was going to try to show that speech to y'all because he was an amazing speaker. Uh, the chef was amazing. So, uh, but anyway, I'm going to try to get that for you. But this is a fine dining <clears throat> right here. I mean, doesn't that food, I mean, even though you don't know, or you, know, you might not know what it is, but it's eye appealing, right? It's sexy. It, it, it kind of sucks you in. You know, that kind of, in the one in the middle, it looks like a, sh uh, maybe some salmon or something. I don't know what that is, but that, maybe not salmon, because that looks like more of a dessert. Um, but it looks sexy, right? I mean, it, in that, even though, you know, this kind of is a weird looking, it's not really, but it still is presented in a sexy way, uh, but that is a fine dining restaurant. Uh, and you have someone that meets, gives you everything you need. You know, you trade the price, you know, you're going to get really great service at a fine dining restaurant. You know, someone's gonna cater to all your needs and that that's the one thing that, you know, I, I think is important. People cater to your needs, but, with that, in turn, it's going to be a lot pricier, right? You know, because people are going to be, uh, you know, it's going to cost money extra for, for all of that attention that you're getting, right? The more attention, the more uh, stuff, the more expensive it's going to be. So just, just kind of be aware of that. Um, let's see. Developing a business plan. Okay, uh, like any other company, a restaurant will need uh, basically a, a business plan. Uh, this plan should include, but not limited to this. Okay, the overall concept and goal of your restaurant. What is your over, you know, what, what is the uh, concept and the overall concept of your restaurant? What, what is it? Let's see overall concept and goal of your restaurant. Um, you know, financial information, um, 
target market, who your target market is, uh, your menu and your menu pricing, equipment and employee details, basically, uh, you know, what kind of equipment you need, how many employees you need, uh, any marketing, do you need to market, or is it a franchise where the franchise will market for you? Because uh, McDonald's is a franchise, so where McDonald's uh, advertise for everybody, not just for uh, for just one one McDonald's. It advertises for all the McDonald's. Uh, so you know, look, kind of knowing how how much you're gonna have to spend on marketing, uh, your menu and your price. Uh, equipment, oh, uh, equipment employee, employees, how many employees do you need? You know, is it, is it all to-go food? Is it all, is it a sit-down fine dining restaurant where you have to, you know, you need quite a few uh, wait staff or whatever else, just making sure you have enough employees. Uh, marketing plan, try to figure out how you need to market to your clientele uh, and then uh, you know getting a exit strategy uh, if you want to if you're looking for an exit strategy um, your menu uh, making sure your your food you know just the menu it, it's your food you want to spotlight that food you want to because that's what you're selling right you're not, you, yes, you're selling yourself, but you're selling your food. So you need to make that menu eye-catching and you need to make it look sexy. Um, okay, How about, do y'all want to take a 30 or 20 minute break? Two or three? Three? All right, 30 minutes then. Um, so around 7.15, 7, 15, 7 Let's say 7.15 or 7.20. What do you want, 15 or 20? All right, 7.20. Oh, 7.15. Let's say 7.15. All right, cool. See you at 7.15. Peace.
All right. So let's get back. Um, talking about creating a menu. So um, the menu, when, when you're doing for a kid menu, you, you need something, you know, like I, I would suggest you getting colors, coloring pages, something for that the kids will uh, enjoy, uh, you know, and keep them busy and all of that. I mean, it's very colorful. You can see that photo right there. It's just very colorful. Um, you know, keep, keeps their interest a little bit. Um, also, um, you know, kids' meals on kids' menus are almost always pre-prepared. And the reason why it is, is uh, because it limits my liability. For example, let's say um, like chicken strips. You, I would buy chicken strips, but I would buy them um, so where they were already cooked, pre-cooked chicken strips. So whenever I sell, like uh, give it to a child, I, I'm not giving them raw chicken or any of that sort of stuff. Like it's already pre-prepared. So it limits your liability because kids are in the high population group, right? They're, they're, they're the most, uh, I, I would say, uh, senior citizens, kids, uh, and anybody immune deficient, uh, like having, um, I don't cancer or having a cold or something like that. Um, their immunity is not the best. Uh, needs to have, you know, needs to be careful on on any sort of uh, raw chicken or any of that sort of stuff. And you'll see cooked Tyson that you just need to throw in the fryer and just kind of get it. Uh, you know, just heat it up type of deal. So, uh, but creating a menu, make it looks, you know, make it look fun for kids, make it fun for kids. If you don't have any kids, if you're trying to create a menu, uh, maybe, you know, uh, talk to some people that have kids and, and do a little kind of field test on uh, the people that have kids. So you can kind of make sure that you're, uh, your kid's menu is, fits the right bill for whoever you're creating it for. Um, come on. I, I menu engineering. So in, in, you know, and this is something you're gonna be doing in your, for your, you know, uh, menu that you're going to be creating for for uh, us in the uh, for our project um, so the engineering basically trying to make it so where you're I mean just look at that uh, look at that menu right there what are your like for me my eyes will go straight to that box where it says shrimp cocktail you know why because it's got that gold little trim around the edges right? Um, that kind of makes your eyes go, go to that one spot. Uh, maybe that's your signature dish, or maybe that's the dish you're trying to sell a lot more of. Um, you know, my eyes will go, I mean, honestly, go straight to here because everything else looks the same. And for some reason, this one in my peripheral, you know, I go straight to this. And then right after that, my eyes go to this. Um, and it's because of the coloring. It's the how they designed it. So, you know, if you're trying to sell something or get people to go buy something on a menu, um, you know, put a box by it, put a, a, an asterisk by it, put a uh, put something by it or, or color it differently because your eyes will immediately go straight to that. Um, so that, that is a good suggestion. Um, let's see. Uh, 
you know, I, I don't mind. Uh, I like the writing on it. Uh, then now look at the price. Look at all the prices on that menu. It's 95, 95, uh, 45, 95, um, you know, a lot of 95s, right? Uh, so what, what you're trying to do for when you're like creating a price, uh, you usually go with either uh, 99 cents, so 5.99 or 5.95. The reason why we go with 99 and 95, the sole reason why is I can get more money. If I put, because not many people look at, you know, if you see 599 or 595, uh, you know, I'll just say, oh, it's $9 or whatever else. You, you know, I, I can round up and get a little bit more extra money from you if I uh, bring it up a little higher to, you know, 995 or 999 or whatever else, it, it, it people still think, ah, oh, it's a good deal. It's not $10. It's only, you know, I mean, with tax and all that, it'll be $10, but people don't think about it in that way. Um, so it's, it's a good marketing uh, way of doing it. So, um, Place the items, the ones that you want to place uh, or that you want to sell a lot of in the, the best real estate possible. Uh, in, in, I would say, you know, something, you know, looking at this, okay, whatever the best real estate or best spot on the menu is where you, you kind of put it, but you want uh, printed designs, you want a uh, layout, you want to, you know, and again, how do we le uh, read left to right or right to left? Left to right, correct? Uh, in, in other countries, they do it the opposite way, right? Um, so we need to make sure that our menu reads the correct way that we kind of read um, you know, and, and kind of going down, uh, we don't want our start, for example, um, you know, usually appetizers go up first, right? Um, I don't want appetizers down at the bottom of the menu. That's, that's not smart, right? You, you want to, uh, go in. If you split this, if this is one side of its appetizers and all of that, and it kind of goes down the column, then you got salads, then this side will have the entrees, the beef or whatever else, it's kind of split up. So just try to find the best spot for, um, you know, your items. A lot of times people like at um, chilies or any of that sort of stuff, they use the little kind of table tent looking advertisements it's kind of sitting on their table it's you know drink specials or they have a little book where it kind of you can flip over and you can look at the desserts or all the drinks and all of that good stuff or you could just do it uh you know just something where it catches your eye it, it you know and then a lot of times what uh, chilies will do, um, you know that they have that kind of bundle, like a, a, a meal deal kind of a thing uh, for two people you can buy, or you get, here's, you can get a dessert or an entree, a salad, a dessert for like a certain amount of money. Um, you know, that is kind of a, a printed design where it, it kind of, they usually give you that menu on the top uh, of the other menu and say, here you go. So you have multiple menus, you have a, a brunch menu, a, uh, you know, so you, you have different styles of menu, but trying to place it in the right spot uh, is important. And you've got, here are different types of menus. You have a um, kind of a, a banquet buffet, cafe house style or cycle menu. A cycle menu is kind of a, a, I would say, you know, if you like at public schools, sometimes where uh, like the public schools where, 
you know, the, the mini will go and then it, uh, at, you know, at winter time, it will recycle to the same menu again. And it's a cycle menu. It'll just go in cycles. Uh, and that, that you see it like that in public schools a lot. Um, and sometimes uh, um, cafes or cafeterias, you see a cycle menu. Um, then you got a la carte, uh, breakfast, lunch menu, dinner menu, California style menu, ethnic menus, specialty menus, room service menus, lounge menus. So those are all different types of uh, types of menus. And you got other types. You got a static menu. Um, a static menu is one where it doesn't change. It never changes. It's always uh, and forever will be the menu and it's not going to change. Uh, kind of like I would say like McDonald's there for a long time, you know, they didn't change. They would have maybe a special, uh, you know, a special sandwich here or there, but their menu never really changed. So, uh, you know, uh, hold on a sec. Someone just put something in the chat and I realized that, hold on. Uh, And guys, if you if you private message me, sometimes I don't see it until a little bit later. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Hi. Um, so let's see. So all all different styles of menus. Uh, and then you've got our aesthetic menu is where it never changes. Uh, uh, wine menu, uh, dessert menu, any of those other types of menu. Oops. All right, a la carte menu. Um, that's, I don't like that photo. All right, here's a static menu. Um, you can tell this one doesn't change. It's, uh, you know, in uh, the most common is a static menu. You'll just see it doesn't really change that much. It's uh, consistent over and over again, but uh, in, you know changes infrequently, but that's a static menu. Prefix menu. A prefix menu is where, does anybody know what a prefix, basically a prefix menu is where uh, and you'll see this at Valentine's or like at Easter or no Valentine's and like uh, Mother's Day. A lot of times uh, you'll say, OK, you'll get this, this and this for $50 or and another one is called a chef's tasting menu. And that would be considered a prefix menu as well. Uh, so it's pre fee or another. Some people call it pre fee. Pre fee is a prefix menu. Uh, where it's a set items or a choice of three different items, uh, three different salads, three different entrees. Uh, so you, and it's a set price for all of it. Uh, that's a prefix menu at a set price. Yes, that is correct at a set price. Uh, 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 menu basically, uh, Uh, what is, what would a buffet fall under? I'll, I'll tell you in just a second. Uh, someone was asking about buffet. Give me one second. But this one is uh, daily changes, uh, uh, kind of soup du jour, um, you know, any of the du jour menu, basically it changes on a uh, daily basis. Uh, and you've got a cycle menu cycle menu it would basically go in the cycle so you might have a fall menu uh, a summer menu a uh, you know a spring menu it really kind of depends but it just kind of uh, cycles so it's a cycling menu um, and then uh, for 
I would say for a uh, um, hold on. a la carte menu, um, I would say a, a buffet would be kind of on a prefix menu because it's you get these things for a certain amount of price. Uh, that's where I would probably uh, put uh, put a buffet and is a prefix menu is it's a certain price and you get all of this for a certain price. That's what I would consider or I would throw it in uh, the buffet would be in uh, prefix. All right. Uh, but beware, I sometimes just uh, dishes, uh, put them on sale you are, you know, sometimes are, for sure, but, you know, make sure that, you know, when you describe, when I say uh, descriptive words, you need to be very descriptive, like, um, you know, for example, like free range, if there are free range eggs, well then put it on there. If it's uh, homemade creamy butter or house made creamy butter, I would never put homemade, but I would do house made because you're really not at home. Um, you know, it's house made. So uh, just make sure you watch that. But, you know, fresh strawberries or freshly picked sh strawberries or, uh, you know, vine ripened tomatoes or, you know, some just very descriptive. Uh, just because you're going to, if it's something that's going to cost you a little bit more money, make sure you put that on the menu so where they understand why the price might be a little more expensive on the menu so they kind of have an under an understanding of it um let's see like you know free range eggs that's going to cost you a lot more but you know if you if you say free freshly free uh you know free ranged eggs from a local uh purveyor or local company uh, and, you know, you give it to them at uh, 50 cents more, people are not going to get as, as upset for 50 cents uh, extra for, for an egg if you explain why it's going to be 50 cents more an egg. Um, but uh, let's see. Here's a video. Let's try. Oh, yeah. You know what? It always freezes up on me. All right, uh, price point, making sure you uh, have a good price point. Uh, hold on. All right, so a price point, making sure you have uh, the price point that fits your customers. Um, if you're in a, a area where, you know, your customers are not as affluent or they don't have a lot of money, maybe uh, you, you need to bring down that, that ceiling of, of the price ceiling a little bit. Uh, so where it, it's down a little bit lower so you can capture everybody's business instead of just capturing one uh, person's business. Um, let's see, atmosphere. Anybody ever go to a, a, a nice restaurant that had great atmosphere? Um, you know, atmosphere really changes uh, a lot. I mean, atmosphere can ma make your restaurant uh, amazing and, and the atmosphere can make your restaurant crappy as well. Um, you know, I mean, if it's looking out by a, you know, a water treatment plant, no one's going to want to eat a, at a restaurant by a water treatment plant or whatever else. You want to have something that's very attractive, look, you know, nice looking, you know, your, 
your the room is not dirty or the you know I mean, just great atmosphere great music great ambiance all, all of those things you're looking for uh for a uh, uh for a nice restaurant management uh you know, management, what, what is your man, you know, what type of manager management structure is there? Is there a general manager and then a manager, then a assistant manager, and then you have a, sometimes even a junior assistant manager or whatever else, uh, depending on how your management, uh, team has it all set up. But, uh, you know, what, what kind of, who will run the facility? Who's going <coughs> to, is it the chef? <coughs> Excuse me. Is the chef running the show? Is the, uh, you know, wh wh who is it? What, what is it? Who's going to run the show when someone's absent or if someone's not there? You need to always make sure you have someone to, to, manage while while you're gone or while someone else is gone or wh whatever else you just need to ha have that in place uh location uh we, we've kind of already talked about this this is part of what i call beating the dead horse we we've, we've gone over it a few times and we're going to go over it again but uh location is very important location 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 um if you have a crappy location uh, you're gonna um, probably not do as well in the restaurant or in that business. Uh, I've seen awesome restaurants, really great restaurants, um, fail only because of of the location. Uh, the location was crappy. It was uh, hard to get to. It was like on one side of the highway, but you had to uh, go and exit like. Uh, so far away and all of that. So, I mean, it, it's just uh, location is very important uh, to where, because people don't like to go and do something when it's hard to get to. Um, everybody doesn't want to go there. You know, everybody wants to just go where it's easy to get to. Um, you know, uh, there is a, uh, I, I live way south Austin, um, but uh, with us uh, live, staying in uh, like the RBOs and hotels for the past two months, uh, since our house was getting fixed from the lightning, uh, there was a, uh, at I think at Mo, or I'm sorry, at I-35 in 71, uh, right in there, there's a Walmart and a, and a uh, uh, Chick-fil-A right in that area. I will refuse. I will never go to that Chick-fil-A because that Chick-fil-A is the, the, the drive to get in there and to get out. It's so difficult to get in and get out of that location. Uh, I refuse to go to the, those locations. So that Walmart or to that uh, Chick-fil-A or there's even a coffee, coffee place right around there as well. Uh, and I refuse to go because it's just so hard to get in and out of that uh, the the parking lot and and it's crazy and and it's just ridiculous. So I refuse to go to that area. So if it's difficult or hard to get to or it's just really packed solid, uh, you know the parking lot or it's hard to park, I'm not gonna go. So location is very important to me. Uh, and I think to a lot of people, people don't like to have to walk very far to get their food, right? So if they park, you know, if you have to park way the hell across the street or whatever else, and then you got to walk over there, uh, it, it discourages people from coming to your restaurant. Uh, it doesn't encourage people. So just, just keep that in the back pocket when you're, when you're, uh, creating a restaurant uh, when you're out there doing it on your own. Um, uh, also, like, you know, I just saw the nightclub there. You know, if you are going to do a nightclub or whatever else, you need to make sure that you, uh, you know, you have 
good lighting in your parking lot, you know, that's also something because people need safety, right? You know, and safety is a concern if you're going out late at night and going out to your car, especially in Austin, you know, we've been having a lot of, a lot of homeless people that are, uh, you know, attacking uh, people or whatever else. And you've just got to be very careful with uh, security and uh, of your, excuse me, of your location. Um, you know, the layout and the design of your kitchen. That's a sexy looking kitchen to me. That, that kitchen right there just turns me on. I don't know what it is. And I just, I mean, I love the, I love how it's all set up. Uh, it's more of a kind of an island kind of a kitchen. Uh, and then you've got all the other stuff in the back. I mean, that, that's a, I, I like that setup. Uh, that's a great setup uh, because you can have a lot of people around the line and it's not going to be too crowded. Um, <clears throat> So you also have quality of food, okay? Quality of your food is very important. That determines the price of your, your food as well. You know, I, I've got cheap fajita meat or I've got good quality fajita meat. Um, you know, so the, there's all different, uh, different things you kind of, uh, you know, you, you can do, but you know, qua quality of the food. Um, that you're going to be ordering. Uh, that's why a lot of times that's why you see uh, trailers get a, a lot of times a lot higher quality of food because they have such a low uh, uh, kind of a low they, they don't have rent they don't have any low overhead so they can get a, a higher quality of food. Uh, let me close the the when the blinds it's blinding me right now hold on one second sorry that sun was going right in my eye and i couldn't see okay um so quality of the food is very important um and it determines the price of your menu. Uh, how to make your menu and restaurant stand, or how to make your restaurant, new restaurant stand out from the crowd. Man, do, you gotta do something. You gotta do something to make your restaurant look good. Because they, there's so many different restaurants out there, guys. You need, to figure out a way that makes sure yours stand out more than everybody else is. But also I wanna talk about, you know, lately the Texas Restaurant Association, they've been saying if you're a bar owner, if you own a bar, if you own a dance club or any, any, uh, anything like that, they, they suggest making sure you have, if you don't have a kitchen, build a kitchen in there because with COVID, you know, a lot of times the bar, you know, bars are closed or whatever else, but if you can sell food out of your bar, then you can, you can stay open. Uh, so it's like, you know, Texas Restaurant Association is telling all any business owner that is doing anything like a, at a bar or a dance club or, anything that is not being utilized right now, go put you a, you know, put your kitchen in there and start making some money doing it that way. Uh, you're, there's going to be a lot of new changes and a lot of companies and a lot of businesses are going to change their model right now because who the hell would want to go to a dance club right now, you know, during all this COVID, you know, happening. No one's going to want to get that close. So, <clears throat> so a dance club is making no money, right? So where if you open up a restaurant or put, start selling food out of your dance club until you can, uh, that pays the bills, right? So making sure you can 
pay your bills. Uh, and that that's just a new a new thing that people are trying to figure out of how to keep their doors open without uh, losing their shirt. And guys, you're going to see so many restaurants in this year and uh, next year go under. There's going to be so many restaurants that file for bankruptcy that are going to, I mean, there's already been a lot, but there's going to be a lot more, especially what I call the mom and pop, the small businesses uh, that can't, that don't have as deep of a pockets as like McDonald's or a lot of the franchise uh, places. They, they have very deep pockets, but uh, the local small local restaurants, uh, they, they're going to, they're going to fail. Um, and they're already starting, but it's getting worse and worse every day, every day. Um, let's see, um, you know, do something, um, you know, I, I know like when my kids were little, I was always looking for a deal. So if it was, I would always look up, uh, kids eat free, where, where can kids eat free? Uh, and I would immediately, my wife and I would go to wherever you could, you know, if you buy two entrees or buy an entree, you get a, a free kid's meal. Well, hell yeah, I'm going to go to that. You know, I mean, my kids won't eat much or whatever else when they were little. And, you know, I mean, hell yeah. I mean, that that's going to attract me to your restaurant at that time in my life is when my kids were little. You know, now I've got, you know, one's 18 and one's uh, 15. You know, totally different story. I, we're going to go to a, a different style restaurant, but, you know, for me, maybe, uh, I don't know, some, like, get a, you know, if they give free appetizers or what, whatever else, now, you know, thing, if, if they just market or make sure you stand out, mm -hmm. because if you don't stand out, people aren't going to come. People, it's going to take a lot more to, for people to come to your restaurant, uh, if you if there's not a what I call a hook, something that will hook you in to bringing you to that to that restaurant. If there's nothing special on it about your restaurant, you know, in, unless you have badass food and you can and you can bang out amazing food every single day, if not you're, you're going to fail. You, you need something that will hook your customers and bring your customers in. Um, whatever it is, free valet, free valet parking, uh, free, uh, our bottomless mimosas or, you know, anything that has a bottomless mimosa. Hey, I'm there. I I'll be there in a heartbeat. Right. Uh, but you, know, you just need to make sure that you know, those are the things that bring people in, uh, are uh, bottomless Bloody Marys or, you know, and you name it, so, something that brings, kind of hooks people in. And that's, that's what I'm, you know, what you need to do at your restaurant to hook people in or to bring people in. You have, um, you know, Zagat. Zagat is kind of a, a big, uh, kind of a rating you also have the Michelin star um, chefs out there. You know, that's another thing that hooks people in or brings people in. How about uh, like being spotlighted on a restaurant or like a cooking show or something like that? Like restaurants, uh, what is it? Diner, Drive-In and Dives. Uh, is that what it's called with the guy with the spiky kind of hair that's all uh, blondish, um, you know, I mean, getting spotlighted on that kind of show, I mean, that 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 is your niche, that brings people to your facility, um, or any of these, like, cooking shows, Chopped, you name it, uh, having a chef on one of those shows, publicity because people are going to be
Um, is everybody there? It said low connection or low something. Am I doing all right? Can everybody see me? Hear me? Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, but just make sure that you know you have something that brings people in. Uh, uh, you have different styles. So you have Mexican food, Chinese food, American, uh, American and seafood restaurants, American restaurants. I mean, there's not that many, um, you know, you got some American restaurants, but you know, I mean, or American food, but you know, every, uh, it's usually some sort of fusion of, of foods. Other popular restaurants, um, you know, just anything that do locally produced uh, food, for example, you could say, um, you know, I only source food from the Travis County area or Williamson County or Austin area or Central Texas. I only uh, get food from the Central Texas area. So something that that makes people go, oh, okay, it's a local, they deal with local farms or local whatever, you know, those are things that bring people to your restaurant. Um, research, uh, make sure you research and, and figure out what, what people like to eat uh, or what people want to eat uh, around your area. You know, I, I, I talk to some people where you know, they'll go out to like, I don't know, grocery store or to, uh, to somewhere and, and ask people, hey, what are you looking for in a restaurant here in this town, in this section of town, um, you know, you go to poll, you try to figure out what kind of restaurants that you are, are they missing in this? Because again, you know, you, you can build a restaurant, any sort of restaurant, but if you don't, if there's not a need for it, people are not going to go. So making sure there's a need for that restaurant in that area is important as well. Um, because if, if, there's too many Mexican food restaurants in, in my area. Why build another one? What's going to make my restaurant, my Mexican restaurant more special than all the other ones that are around there? I don't know, but you're going to have to make it, figure it out because if you want your restaurant to succeed, you need to make sure that it is something that people are wanting. Uh, and sometimes people are not wanting another, I mean, I literally don't want to see another uh, Jiffy Lube or another uh, Auto Zone in my area. We have too many damn Jiffy Lubes and too many damn Auto Zones uh, around our area. I just hate it. You know, everything I see is a new Jiffy Lube or a new Auto Zone. I, I, we don't want that. I don't. We, there's really no need for it. There's a bunch around here. Let's get something that we need in Southwest Austin, not just a Jiffy Lube or a, uh, you know, some something like that. We don't really need that. So just make sure that your whatever your restaurant is, people need it and want it. Uh, because if not, people are not going to want or desire to go to your restaurant at all. Uh, plan your restaurant design uh, in in layout, making sure you have uh, a proper enough storage, proper enough uh, area for your customers. Um, you know, the most, the busiest section where you make the most money is on the uh, floor, on the dining, uh, in the dining room floor, right? So that's why most dining room floors uh, are dining rooms are so much bigger than everything else. Your your kitchen is the smallest because you don't you don't make money in the kitchen. You make money on the in the dining room. The more asses are in the chair, the more money we're going to be making. Does that make sense? So making sure you have a good design, good layout, good restaurant a uh, restroom layout. Guys, I I would especially now have a uh, have a a separate sink right outside of the rest restroom 
so where people can wash their hands right after they come out of the bathroom. Uh, because no, no one wants to be touching, you know, I mean, like I wash my hands right when I go out, but then I've got to touch a dirty ass door or door handle or, or whatever else. Uh, have a, a hand sink uh, or a, a hand washing station outside of the restroom door. So like right outside, then there's a, a, a hand washing sink there for a kind of communal for guys and girls or whatever else. But you just have a hand washing station right out there because that or make sure you have hand hand free kind of going into the bathroom and hand free going out where I can just uh, use my elbow and press to push the door open or if there's a button where I can kind of the handicap door where you can kind of press the button and it'll open up uh, something where I can do that but make it so where it's hands free to get out of the bathroom no one wants to touch the bathroom door and and especially now you see a lot more you're going to see a lot more of those hand drying stations like where you kind of stick your hand in there and it dries it like air dries it well once you air dry it they sometimes don't have paper towels in the in the bathroom because of they got the hand dryers now i gotta i just clean my hands and now i've got to touch that dirty door uh with my clean hands or try to you know use my shirt to grab the door so making sure it's it's easy for people to get to doesn't you know it doesn't smell like a dirty bathroom you know no one wants to smell urine uh you know or fecal matter or you know any of that sort of stuff so you want to make sure it's it's clean uh regularly um your bar design is is good for crowds yeah not just uh everybody's kind of crowded around you want it to uh a good design for your uh, for your bar what kind of tables chairs uh you know you name it all of those things um i am gonna we're gonna probably uh quit in just a second but this is a chapter that's uh, very important. So we're going to spend probably another day on this, uh, on this, or at least a half of our day tomorrow on this one, uh, on this PowerPoint. Let me stop sharing real quick. All right, so we're going to stop at this PowerPoint. We will re pick it up tomorrow or yeah tomorrow back on the same PowerPoint because I want to finish this because this is something you, you need to know about uh, for your project. Now some of you have turned in your uh, homework that I ask for uh, for the weekend. Um, it's basically a job uh, a job basically um, Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Can I use, uh, hold on. Are y'all okay if I'm using someone's from class or here? Let me get to the PowerPoints from my, uh, yes. So day 10, I think. Hold on. All right, a job aid. Uh, hold on, let me share this. All right, so this is a job aid right here. It, this tells you how to make a bechamel sauce or a bechamel. Uh, this is how to make a burrito. I had someone tell me how to make Kool-Aid. 
someone how to tell me how to start a car, uh, how to make ice cream. Um, what else? Let me see. Um, hold on, I'm looking to see other examples that people have. Okay, start a car. Uh, oh, uh, prepare a dish uh, like for cleaning dishes, what the pH balance should be, what, you know, all of that good stuff. Uh, let's see, what is it? Oh, how to make a, uh, a sandwich. Uh, how to make a PB&J sandwich, how to make a grilled cheese sandwich, how to wash your hands um any of those so anything like that that can help you uh here's how to make tea right here um how to make a mixed drink would be fine how to you know whatever else but something that has some pictures this one is how to make a french press so anything that you that can help you make a job or uh to complete a job Okay, now that is what I need and I will give you full credit. Hold on, uh, let me turn the sharing off. I'll give you uh, for today, if you give it to me today, by the end of the day, I will give you full credit for it. But uh, if you give it to me tomorrow, it, uh, it's five points off every day. Uh, so if you give it to me today, uh, you'll get full credit, no problem, by, or by the end of the day. No problem, but if you give it to me tomorrow and uh, every day after it's five points off every single day, you're you're at, you're late. Okay, so uh, if you haven't sent it in, uh, spend a little time today working on it to send me a job to, or a job uh, or oh, hold on. a job aid right here. Uh, so anything that you want, how to make a mixed drink, how to make candy, how to feed your cat, how to feed your dog, how to wash your dog. I don't care what it is, but just make sure you have some sort of uh, list of what you need to do. Everybody good with that? Uh, can I still complete the homework Miss Friday? Of course you can. Uh, you can finish your homework, whatever else, but that is the homework. If you can get that to me uh, by today, um, that would be awesome. And then, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be, I mean, it's, this is not many pictures. I mean, that's a few pictures, six pictures right there. Not many words, really. Uh, so I, on the burrito one. So just kind of make sure that you uh, send that to me by today. I would be a happy camper. Other than that, we will uh, reconvene tomorrow. Uh, any questions, problems, or concerns? We good? Sweet. Y'all have a great day. Be safe. It's hot as hell out there. Drink a lot of water if you need to be there, uh, be outside. Have a great one, and I'll see y'all tomorrow morning. Peace out, guys.